welcome to this Saturday Travel and History Tip. I mentioned last Saturday that there are 14 national park sites in the state. And last week we talked about the Saugus Ironworks. And if you haven't watched that, I want to encourage you to go back and do that. And today I will be presenting information about the Springfield Armory National Historic Site. It is located in the western part of the state in Springfield. It is the nation's first national armory. It was authorized by President George Washington and was created in 1794. The historic site encompasses 55 acres and original armory buildings. The main building houses a museum that maintains one of the most extensive and unique small firearms collections in the world. Also, on exhibit are examples from the country's largest collection of experimental and standard military arms. Exhibits depict manufacturing processes and inventors and the women who worked there. The site was authorized in 1974 and established in 1970. From the National Park Site website, we read, The Forge of Innovation. On a chill spring morning in 1968, amid speeches and farewell addresses, the men and women of Springfield Armory bid each other goodbye as the stars and stripes were lowered for the last time. After nearly two centuries of continuous production of rifles and muskets used by America's armed forces in every war in the nation's history, the armory closed its gates and fell silent. Begun as a major arsenal under the authority of General George Washington early in the Revolutionary War, the first National Armory began manufacturing muskets in 1794. Within decades, Springfield Armory had perfected pioneering manufacturing methods that were critical to American industrialization. Reopened in 1978 as the Springfield Armory National Historic Site, the original 1840s arsenal houses, the world's largest collection of historic American American military firearms, and this was one of the most fascinating places to visit. And yes, I did pretend that I was a park ranger that day. I do have a dream of being the oldest park ranger and working at Death Valley in the winter and Yellowstone in the summer. I hope that will be accomplished at some point in time. Inside the museum, they have a scale model of Armory Square. This was an amazing display of rifles. And this poem was the placard that was at the base of this one. The displays were incredible, and you could spend hours upon hours reading each label for each piece of artillery. These were quite humorous. These were mishaps. One had been struck by lightning. And this one, a porcupine gnaws at a musket for the sweat wet salt impregnating it. And in the heat of the battle, Chance drives a musket ball into the stalker barrel where it remains embedded. If anyone is passing through western Massachusetts, I certainly recommend that you stop off here to see this historic site. This is a barrel straightening machine. After going through the great heat of manufacturing gun barrels needed to be straightened, a barrel that was not perfectly straight would not be accurate. This type of machine was in use for most of the 20th century. I found this sign most interesting. Established by President George Washington and renowned for its technological innovations, inventions, and inventors, Springfield Armory developed and manufactured shoulder weapons for the U.S. Armed Forces from 1794 to 1968. Along the Connecticut River, private industry supporting and supplementing the armory's production adopted manufacturing and quality control techniques pioneered at Springfield Armory. This transfer of manufacturing technology from the government to the private sector was was further advanced by former armory craftsmen working for companies that manufactured products in addition to firearms. Together, they created the Great Precision Corridor, spreading Springfield Armory's precision manufacturing practices throughout the valley. Here are a couple of bits of interesting information. Robbins and Lawrence Company in Windsor, Vermont, established to fill contracts under the guidance of Springfield Armory, manufactured an early repeating rifle that was the forerunner of the Henry rifle used in the Civil War. The design was later modified into the Lever Action Repeater that successfully launched the Winchester Repeating Arms Company of New Haven, Connecticut. And that is what is so interesting is that most of these places have their start in the New England states or in New York. Thomas Blanchard, inventor of the Blanchard lathe for shaping gun stocks, also built two steamboats in the 1820s and started the first successful commercial riverboat service between Hartford, Connecticut and Bellows Falls, Vermont. While working at Springfield Armory, Blanchard also built a steam-powered car, 
69 years before the Duray automobile. And Horace Smith, who co-founded Smith & Wesson with Daniel B. Wesson in 1856, joined his father, William, at Springfield Armory in 1818 and worked there until 1842. Ames Manufacturing Company, which became famous worldwide as inventors and manufacturers of precision machinery, moved to Springfield for production contracts with Springfield Armory. In the 1850s, Ames modernized British military arms production by introducing machinery designed at Springfield Armory. William Ruger, who co-founded firearm manufacturer Sturm Ruger and Company in Southport, Connecticut in 1949, began his training at Springfield Armory during World War II. Colt Patent Firearms Manufacturing Company, established in New Haven, moved to Hartford in 1848 to be nearer the trained workforce and arms production at Springfield Armory. After the armory closed in 1968, Colt Manufacturing Company became the primary shoulder arm manufacturer for the U.S. military. The Pratt & Whitney Company of East Hartford, Connecticut developed out of the Pratt Whitney Tool Company, founded by Francis Pratt and Ammon Whitney, both of whom worked for Colt Manufacturing during the 19th century. And you may know Pratt and Whitney for their engines. Springfield Master Armorer Thomas Warner helped found the Massachusetts Arms Company in Chicopee, Massachusetts in 1842. He later worked with Eli Whitney Jr. to update arms manufacturing in New Haven, Connecticut. You never attached Eli Whitney to arms, did you? Rolls-Royce produced many of its finest cars in Springfield in the 1920s and 1930s. Springfield was the only location outside of England where they found a reliable pool of precision metal workers. Springfield Armory employee James Lee invented the vertical magazine system in 1879, which was used by Remington and Winchester in the U.S., Mauser in Germany, and in the Lee Enfield Rifle in Britain. Master machinist Cyrus Buckland helped form Smith, Hall, and Buckland in Springfield and the Wesson Firearms Company of Springfield and Worcester, Massachusetts. And Henry Leland, inventor of the Cadillac and Lincoln Automobiles. The electric automobile starter, the V8 engine, and the Liberty aircraft engine was trained as a machinist at Springfield Armory during the Civil War. Who knew that all of these famous people and important innovations all owe their origins to the Springfield Armory in Springfield, Massachusetts? In one of the Saturday Travel and History Tips, I will take you to one of Henry Wadsworth Longfellow's homes. But in the meantime, I want to read this poem, The Arsenal at Springfield. This is the arsenal from floor to ceiling. Like a huge organ rise the burnished arms, but from their silent pipes no anthem pealing startles the villages with strange alarms. Ah, what a sound will rise, how wild and dreary, when the death angel touches those swift keys. What loud lament and dismal misery will mingle with their awful symphonies. I hear even now the infinite fierce chorus, the cries of agony, the endless groan, which through the ages that have gone before us and long reverberations reach our own. On helm and harness rings the Saxon hammer, through Simbric forest roars the Norseman's song, and loud amid the universal clamor, o'er distant deserts sound the Tartar gong. I hear the Florentine, who from his palace wheels out his battle bell with dreadful din, and Aztec priests upon their Teocalis beat the wild war drums made of serpent skin. The tumult of each sacked and burning village, the shout that every prayer for mercy drowns, the soldiers' revels in the midst of pillage, the wail of famine in beleaguered towns, the bursting shell, the gateway wrenched asunder, the rattling musketry, the clashing blade, and ever and anon in tones of thunder, the diapason of the cannonade. Is it, O oh man, with such discordant noises, with such accursed instruments as these, thou drownest nature's sweet and kindly voices, and jarrest the celestial harmonies. Were half the power that fills the world with terror, were half the wealth bestowed on camps and courts, given to redeem the human mind from error, there were no need of arsenals nor forts. The warrior's name would be named abhorred, and every nation that should lift again, its hand against a brother on its forehead, would wear forevermore the curse of Cain. Down the dark future, through long generations, the echoing sounds grow fainter and then cease, and like a bell with solemn, sweet vibrations, I hear once more the voice of Christ say, Peace, peace, and no longer from its brazen portals, the blast of war's great organ shakes the skies. But beautiful as songs of the immortals, the holy melodies of love arise. 1844-1845. The Arsenal at Springfield. Henry Wadsworth Long. American history. Learn it. Love it. Appreciate it.
Don't let them steal our history. Share our American history. If you appreciate our content, tell others and repost on your social platforms. Thank you.